And what I want to start with is really where most authors are going to start and typically where I honestly see most authors spend most of their time. And that is working with predefined templates and predefined data items. Again, doing the basics shouldn't be difficult, shouldn't be overwhelming, and it really isn't. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just launch Report Studio. This is the latest version of Cognos 10.2.1, and the little welcome screen has actions that you can launch directly from here to go into the, whatever tool it is that you need to use. I'm going to go ahead and work with this sample package. Um, if you're interested in you know where the samples come from, it's a pretty well understood process. Part of the um, install documentation talks about how to implement and deploy the sample content and that gives you something to just get started with and maybe follow some of the documentation and some of the exercises that for instance people like us develop our training around the vendor supplied sample data and of course the vendor also has their training based on that. It gives you an environment to work from while you're in the process of developing your own production data. So Report Studio is a browser-based tool, as I mentioned in the slide deck. It's running here in Internet Explorer. That's probably my favorite browser to use for Report Studio. It's not everyone's go-to browser. You'll notice that in some of the other exercises, I'll be using you know, a different browser for different types of browsing and different types of activities. Uh, but the, what I've found is that we realize the vendors develop their tools to work better in certain environments, and that's just kind of the reality of it. Uh, so I found that IE seems to be the most stable and effective uh, platform for things like Report Studio. Other, pla other browser platforms are supported, and if you check the IBM site, you can again see which environments are supported for the version that you're on. So the most common type of report, what you'll notice is I decide to create a new report, I'm given a selection of certain templates, and these are just out-of-the-box templates. There's nothing that I did special after my installation to provide these templates. This is what is part of your normal experience. And so we're going to work with a few of these today. The most common type of report that people create, if you envision a report, and regardless of what tool you're using, the vast majority of us are thinking about what we call a list report. And lists are just tabular representations of data, right? So all of the different styles of reports really are just different ways for us to present information, present data. And a list is a common and very useful way to present data. And what you'll notice is as I select the template, I'm going to be provided with what's called a metadata package. These are all fancy words, but basically this is my data source. And we're going to talk a little bit about after the exercises where they, these packages and data sources come from, what types of things can be considered in terms of the project planning and strategy in order to facilitate reporting and facilitate analytics and to make that process much more effective and productive. But this has been built for me. There's a lot of content in this package. Again, this is just provided as the samples, so if you have the samples, you'll be able to use the same little package here. And I've got some sales information that I want to put together into a report. Now, this requirement is also something that I figured was a good way to demonstrate basic list authoring, but also follows a business requirement that we run into quite often. And that is, I have a scenario here where in my product uh, management, team. I have five product line managers, right? So there's product lines that organize the products that we sell. So I'm going to double click and just by double clicking I'm able to add these items, these data items or attributes into my report. And so for the five product line managers that I have, each of them would like to see a similar report, basically the same report, but just for their product line. And it needs to be delivered to their inbox as a PDF every morning. And so I want to minimize the overhead that I have in my reporting application. And one of the ways we can optimize our environment is to produce fewer reports and use interactive features and use dynamic authoring techniques so that we have fewer things to maintain over the long run. This has tremendous benefit over the life cycle of a project. And so my objective here is to create a single report that I can then automate as a PDF to be delivered with the most current information every morning 
into the inbox for each of my five different product line managers, each of them receiving just the data for their product line. And so I'm going to show you a technique. It's not the only technique for this, but I think it's one of the more straightforward ones and honestly one of the more accessible and, and common of these techniques. Um, so I'm going to throw in a few product items here. Again, you can see how my data is organized in the package with these different subjects, making it hopefully easier for me to find and access the items that I need. I need to throw in some measures, so I have some sales measures here. I want to see the quantity and the unit cost. And then there's another measure I've been asked to produce that's not in my existing data items, and it's the product of the number of units times the unit cost. It's an item that we want to see called total cost. And so the first thing I'm going to do before I bring in my total cost is I'm going to organize my list. I know my data well enough, and again, this is the sample data, so unfortunately I actually do know it pretty well, but working with your own data you should have this familiarity where I have one to many types of relationships in my data. You'll notice in Report Studio that as I add the items to the list, the query is not executing. Everything happens here in design mode. This tool is very much a design-centric tool. We'll ultimately run the report, execute the query, and view the results. But in the studio itself, we're always working in design mode. The concept of organizing your columns can be done in a couple of different ways. One is simple sorting, and the other is by grouping. And grouping is a very common way to organize lists in a, in a or columns, excuse me, in a list. So I'm going to group my product lines. I'm going to group my product types. And then I want to grab a calculation or create a calculation based off of these two items here. And so I wanted to show this in this exercise because even though most of what I want to do here for the basics is leveraging existing data items from the package, there's also some very accessible tools in Report Studio, and this has not always been the case to create simple calcs and do filtering and simple prompting. And that's what I want to show in this exercise as well. So if I were to control click these two columns in the list, these two items, I have a little calculate tool here. It actually gives me as a drop down certain options to do basic arithmetic calcs, percentage calcs, and then I can go in and do more sophisticated calculations as well, but all I really needed was the product of quantity times unit cost. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. So just a simple control click, use the toolbar and pretty quickly grab my item calculation here. I'm going to double click on here because I don't like the name that's been given to me. So just a double click will bring up a dialog box allowing me to change the name of the data item. So my expression is also exposed here. Don't need to change that. I'm just going to call this total cost. Click OK. So I've got the uh, new value that I needed. And then the next piece was related back to this scenario where I need to have this information delivered to the different product line managers. Instead of creating a separate report for each of them, I'm going to create a prompt that allows us to choose which product line the d report runs for each time it's run. And again, there are several ways to resolve this, but one of the easiest is just to simply select the item in your report, use the toolbar, and basically what I'm going to be doing is creating a dynamic filter. So prompting is a way of controlling filter criteria. So if I create a custom filter for this column, You'll notice that I have the ability right here in the filter dialog. A little bit slower than I had hoped, but it's there eventually. Okay. And just simply clicking this checkbox says, let's build a prompt. So instead of creating fixed criteria, each time the report is run, we'll be prompted to select product lines. So I'm just going to simply click OK to that. go ahead and add a title here. So just double clicking to add some text. I'm just going to call this product line report. One 
one of the things I often like to do is also just some simple alignment. So clicking here in the page body, I can use the toolbar to do a center alignment and put my list in the center, which lines up also as the header and the title are centered there as well. I think that makes sense. So, you know, nothing really all that challenging yet. But you'll notice that now that I run the report, a new window pops up, the viewer, the prompt asked me to select product lines. Notice I can select many here. I'll just pick one for this example and click OK. The query does run. I see my result. This is the HTML version of the output. There are multiple pages to this particular product line, so you'll notice there's navigation to page through. The HTML only produces 20 rows per page by default. I can certainly change that if I wanted to. And this is, you know, a pretty Good example of a simple list report with some prompting, simple calc that I've created as well.